Before we get started, please check out our sponsor, Survival Preppers USA. Get the new Linden Farms 1440 food storage meals. High quality ingredients and the most delicious recipes for when you need it most. SurvivalPreppersUSA.com. Since February, the outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus has killed more than 826 people. What started in Guinea has since spread to other West African nations such as Sierra Leone, Liberia, and potentially the Ivory Coast. What may seem like the perfect setup for a Hollywood horror movie is unfolding in real time and at a record speed, not just threatening West Africa, but Western nations, potentially global populations, and has already proven the largest outbreak in recorded history. According to WHO, the World Health Organization, the pandemic is spiraling out of control. WHO's chief, Margaret Chan, says the outbreak is moving faster than our efforts to control it, and if the situation continues to deteriorate, the consequences can be catastrophic in terms of lost lives, as well as a high risk to the spread of other countries. A few critical questions immediately emerge, of which we can speculate and we'll try to answer in this video. We also cover the unfolding of events, a few conspiracy theories, and the likelihood of containing a legitimate outbreak. Firstly, why is the Obama administration actively transporting infected Ebola patients back to America? Does this not put millions of Americans' lives at risk and potentially encourage an aggressive outbreak among its populations? Why isn't the Obama administration taking the World Health Organization's warning seriously? Two patients thus far have been transported or are on their way back to America for treatment. Dr. Kent Brantley, an American doctor who was recently stricken by the deadly virus while in Liberia, and missionary Nancy Wrightball, who had also been working alongside Kent, uh, the doctor, and has been brought back to the United States in a special isolation ward in Atlanta. Although his health is reportedly improving, the question remains, why was Kent transported back to America? And why are we putting millions of Americans' lives at risk? Why can't these sick individuals be treated on location, therefore protecting the safety of all Americans and erring on the conservative side of a worst case scenario and potential outbreak here in the United States? The second individual, Nancy Wrightbull, is also on her way back to America to be treated for the deadly infectious disease. Again, why put millions of Americans' lives at risk for two people? Are government officials trying to infect the masses or are they just dumb? Curiously, Obama signed an amendment to Executive Order 13295 just a few days ago, under the radar, of course, on July 31st, that gives the President absolute executive power to detain any individual, American citizen or otherwise, that allows apprehension, detention, or conditional release of individuals to prevent the introduction, transmission, or spread of suspected communicable diseases. Specifically, the amendment targets those individuals suspected of respiratory illness or severe acute respiratory syndromes. So what does the President know that we don't? Why the hurry in amending an executive order if there is nothing to worry about in the first place? Let's say the disease has already spread beyond the control of government officials, for example, and the White House is on lockdown preparing for a worst case scenario. Do you think you're the, you or the U.S. government would alert you to the threat? Or would they hide the facts to buy as much time as possible before widespread panic, death, riots, and total societal collapse inevitably ensued? Would you be invited to their underground bunkers? Another logical question is whether the outbreak is natural in its origin. Has the disease naturally spread on its own, or was it engineered? Our government warns us about this all the time, the threat of biological warfare and superbugs. Is a possible terrorist or perhaps a rogue nation found a weak spot in West Africa to spread the deadly disease with the intent to kill millions of people and destabilize the global economy? Is this the biological warfare we've heard so much about? According to WHO, the potential consequences of a widespread outbreak are not just catastrophic, but could also cause severe socioeconomic disruption, as well as a high risk of spread to other countries. Not to mention this could also be part of a much more comprehensive destabilization agenda and ethnic cleansing, but we will leave that to the conspiracy theorists. Because again, thinking outside the box at all, or critically, is conspiracy theory. Ebola is not curable. Its symptoms horrific, and its kill rate up to 90% in its victims. If there were any disease to be manufactured by terrorists and released to the general public for infection, this would be it. It would be the equivalent of not just hitting a home run, but a grand slam. Buy me some peanuts and cracker, Jack. A third individual, another doctor, working in Liberia, Alan Jameson, somehow flew back to the United States on his own a few days ago and put himself in a self-imposed quarantine. How was this allowed to happen? And how was this individual, after being exposed to the deadly virus, allowed to travel freely and bypass security before being quarantined back in the United States? I mean, shouldn't he have gotten a hand down his pants at the airport? He wasn't even quarantined by our own government. He had to put himself in quarantine. Does this sound like the type of government, disease, and or border control capable of handling a potentially massive outbreak? 
Either this is another example of the gross ineptitude of the too big to fail, although they regularly do, federal government, or perhaps the missteps are intentional. Conspiracy theories abound, and to be honest, they are justified. Some of the most common include an Obama-led power grab, militarization of the United States, the potential declaration of martial law, a eugenics angle, and even a potential vaccination. Aha! This is where it gets really interesting. According to the FDA, the U.S. government just happens to be testing a new experimental Ebola vaccine. How convenient. Soon to be tested on Americans as early as September. According to CNN and USA Today, the National Institutes of Health's Infectious Disease Unit is working with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to put the vaccine into trial as quickly as possible. Is this an attempt by officials to infect millions of Americans with government needles? With Obamacare riding to the rescue in golden armor? I mean, hey, who can refuse a vaccine to Ebola with the potential to wipe out your entire family? You'll take the shot. If you want to live, that is. According to reports, the Ebola outbreak started in Guinea and quickly spread to Sierra Leone and Liberia, killing over 826 people and counting so far. The disease, which is spread by close contact with infected victims exhibiting symptoms such as extreme nausea, vomiting, internal and external bleeding, is one of the most gruesome, deadly and virulent in the world. Sierra Leone has already sent in troops to enforce quarantine, effectively declaring martial law. Also on tap, which seems uncanny in its timing and strangely peculiar, is a U.S. African summit being held in Washington, D.C. this week, a three-day conference that will bring nearly 50 African officials to Washington, D.C. for an unprecedented gathering The government officials say could be a turning point for U.S.-Africa relations. Really? In addition to flagrantly flying infected Americans back home plagued with the disease, Obama just happens to be hosting a dinner party with African officials reeling from the outbreak? Of course, the president said not to worry, and that the agenda for the African summit has not changed, and whatever that is, and that some of the international guests will undergo additional screening. We are taking the appropriate precautions, the president said at a press conference on Friday. While Obama talks rainbows and sugar gumdrops, another individual has collapsed at Gatwick Airport on Sunday, just south of central London after flying from Sierra Leone. She reportedly fell violently ill on board a commercial airliner and collapsed just after arrival at the airport. She was later pronounced dead by local media. Officials say she was tested negative for the virus and that it's only a coincidence that she just happened to be flying from a host country and had been exhibiting the exact same symptoms of an infected Ebola patient. Be careful not to ask too many questions, folks. You don't want to be considered a nut. Again, would your government tell you if a massive outbreak was past the point of no return, containment impossible, and the disease about to annihilate vast swaths of the global population? Do you honestly think you would get a personal email from the president? Here's what we know. We already have at least two infected patients who have been transferred back to the United States. A third person mysteriously bypassed border security and CDC safeguards and is in self-imposed quarantine. Officials won't say how he got back to America or bypassed security, so I'm assuming he traveled on board a commercial airliner and exposed himself to hundreds of people at a minimum. Although not contagious until exhibiting symptoms, this proves a gross security breach that has already likely been duplicated many times over with a live infected patient. Another individual who they say tested negative just happened to be traveling from Sierra Leone, one of the infected host nations, and just collapsed and died at a major airport after being exposed to hundreds if not thousands of people. And this just in a few days. Imagine what could happen in a few weeks, a month's time. History shows us that mass outbreaks leave underdeveloped and developed nations grossly ill-prepared. Whether it was the Black Plague that swept through Europe in the 14th century, killing an estimated 25 million people and upwards of 60% of the European population, or pandemics that wiped out up to 80% of the Native American population by the 19th century, we know containment can be difficult, oftentimes impossible. It is well known that American hospitals have trouble containing a simple staph infection, yet alone a deadly virus such as Ebola. And we can't even pretend to understand the potential casualties or gross implications of a potential outbreak. Our government can't even control our borders, for God's sakes, yet alone a microscopic airborne disease as deadly as Ebola from spreading. I'm Christopher Green, and you've been tuning into AMTV, alternative media television. Hard hitting and in your face. Please share this video everywhere, make it viral, and click the link below to support our sponsor.